We have some aqua zumba taking place. Wow. We have um, our hydro rider bikes in the water for spin classes that are very new to Saskatchewan. And we have very excited, very qualified uh, aqua size instructors, and we're very ready for whatever's going to come at us this year. Well, I hope everybody comes. It's a beautiful facility. Thank you again, Jody. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Jody Hargraves, the manager here at the Aquatic Centre. Wow, what a facility we saw today. Mm -hmm. Just one of the many things that you can do here in North Battleford, but you can also have a great quality of life. Yes, it's not just people who are taken well care of in the North <laughs> Battleford area. Animals also get a lot of TLC. We noticed that when we visited, what's it called? The Linda Linda Paw. It's an Animal Rescue Shelter. Take a look. We're here with Jeanette Leesk now, and uh, tell us a little bit about Lendapaw. Uh, we see some animals behind us. Tell us, they all have individual stories. Yeah, um, well, Lendapaw got started about a year ago in uh, August, and there was just a need for it in the Battlefords, in the rural areas of dogs, um, being found that they're not really uh, being abandoned or needing rescue. So we found that, as you can see behind us, that there's quite a few of them here and uh, they all needed rescue whether they were a gunshot wound or had mange or parvo or anything like that. Um, this little guy here that's uh, on the ground he was actually um, found with a broken femur and a bullet in his leg so we pinned the leg and um, now he's just recovering from that right now. So you rely a lot on volunteers, though. I mean, you you and a friend are kind of running the place, but really you rely on volunteers to help you. Yeah, out. we do. We have a board member, board members of nine people. Um, we rely strictly volunteer based. Uh, all our money is strictly from fundraising. Um, so there's no money that's being given to us unless we're fundraising it or strictly through donations. So if someone is watching, you're looking for foster homes, but also adoptive homes. We for are, little guys like that one. <laughs> we are. We are definitely in need of a lot of foster homes, but you know we have 25 dogs in our rescue right now, so we do definitely need some adoptive homes. And you know the applications are online. We can we can uh, get access to those and. And hopefully we can find some of these guys some homes in the next little while. The toughest part is probably just picking out which one you want to take home. It is, yeah. And you know we do try to try to um, put the the right home with the right family, or the right sorry, the right dog with the right family. And um, it usually works out pretty good. We haven't had any dogs got brought back to us. You know, we've in the last year we've rescued over 250 dogs. So. Well, great, uh, great cause and uh, some great animals, Jeanette. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You guys ready? Let's go. All right. All right. So as you can see, a lot of the dogs from Lendapaw are actually here with us tonight and all of the volunteers who helped make Lendapaw a huge success. Uh, the animals also get a lot of help uh, from the Balfords Animal Hospital and the Unity Vet Clinic in caring for their uh, vet bills. Yeah, and I tell you, that place is difficult to leave without a dog in your There in might your be a orders. puppy or two oh, on the bus for goodness. sure. <laughs> hey, the dogs, the people here in North Battleford, we've had an absolutely fantastic day. We want to thank the crowd that has come here to welcome us to the community. Also, a big thanks to Mike Colstead, who has uh, put up with us for the day. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we've had a lot of fun in your home community. Yes, and a big thank you to our partner, STC, and the North Battleford Boys and Girls Club for putting on the great barbecue here today. And Kevin, thanks for you for coming along. Really enjoyed it. Uh, next time, I guess I'll bring a, a smaller set of trunks. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Twitter for some more pictures if you can't get enough Whoa. of uh, Kevin. That. Uh, we're going to be continuing our broadcast tomorrow. Our hometown tour continues in Meadow Lake. We're going to be coming to you live from the Stampede Grounds. Yeah. So if you're in the area, please come out and say hello. We'll try to get you on TV, too. Right now, we'll turn things back over to Craig Wilson in our Saskatoon studios. CTV's Hometown Tour, brought to you by STC. All right, was there a wardrobe malfunction with Kevin? I'm not sure. Anyway, when we come back, why library employees are running out of patience. And also, how close to completion is the Circle Drive South project? And Jeff, uh, construction workers, farmers need it to stay dry. Any promises? Well, not about that. Uh, actually, things are going to stay dry. 
a smaller set? I'm not sure I want to see Kevin in a set of Speedos, you know, really. This is this kind of, it's kind of scarring to think about it. Anyhow, uh, let's take a look at what we've got going on. A beautiful evening setting up right now. And here's our almanac for today. And it looks, it looks like we had ourselves a decent day. You know, typical is 17 degrees. Uh, we hit 16 degrees today. Record temperature set a couple of years ago. Uh, 34 degrees, I guess, three years ago in 2009. Minus six, though, of the brittle harvest temperature in 1918. Let's go coast to coast right now and see what kind of temperatures we'll start out. Uh, with the West Coast. 21 degrees right now in Victoria, 23 in Vancouver, it's 22 in Prince George, so lots of sunshine across British Columbia. A little bit of cloud showing up in Edmonton, but it's sunny in Calgary, 22 degrees in Cowtown. Uh, Regina, 14 degrees. It's raining in Winnipeg, 13, 6 in Churchill. As we take a look at the lakehead, we're dealing with some rain right now in Thunder Bay. Clear skies and winds are 18, 15 in Toronto with partly cloudy skies. It's clear in Ottawa and Montreal. Temperatures uh, just into the barely into the double digits, 11 degrees in Sudbury with partly cloudy skies. In Atlantic Canada, we're dealing with rain in Charlottetown and Halifax, temperatures around 17 degrees. In Fredericton, partly cloudy skies and 12 degrees. And in St. John's, Newfoundland, we're looking at clear skies and 13 degrees. And Pat? The Huskies football team is clicking on all cylinders, particularly on offense. Yeah, they're really good at putting up a lot of points lately, Jeff. Uh, we'll discuss that and a whole lot more coming up in sports. News is brought to you in part by Carpet Superstores in their new location on Miller, north of 60th. performance car should provide thrills on command with features like a turbocharged engine giving you the power of a V6 with the fuel efficiency of a four-cylinder. Coming from an SUV makes it all the more surprising. Engineered with you in mind, the totally redesigned Santa Fe from Hyundai. Lots of stores advertise 50% off sales all the time because it sounds like you're saving a lot of money. But it's not just about saving a lot, it's about paying the lowest price. I know. Right? That's like buying a banana for five bucks but saying you got a really good deal because it used to be ten bucks. That's one really expensive banana. That's why we love Leon's integrity pricing. No inflated ticket prices, you just get the lowest price. Wait, wait, maybe it's a designer banana. Dolce and banana? I don't even know where you come up with these things. Hey, nice phone. Thanks. Yeah, yeah Sony Xperia Ion, amazing HD screen, LTE, okay. super fast, uh, cheap, well, inexpensive, super fast. Dude, who's the goddess? Her mom. Can I get a ride to practice tomorrow? No, no, okay. tissue that's as soft on nature as it is on you. Cascade. Soft on everything it touches. It's a game changer. The Volt at Sherwood Chev. We carry machine guns, 9 millimeters, and we are trained to fire those guns. Every day you push yourself to your limit. This is what we do, man. Nobody needs to get hurt today. I want to be able to hold you to what you just told me. She's active. Put that weapon down or we will have to shoot you! Flashpoint final season begins tomorrow at 10, 9 central. Closed captioning brought to you in part by Tim Hortons. Now you can enjoy free Wi-Fi at over 2,000 participating restaurants from coast to coast. It's time for Financial Markets is brought to you in part by Cameco. Cameco, making a difference in our community.
Saskatoon library workers are fed up with low wages and stalled contract talks. So they took their message to the street today. But did library management hear their concerns? Jennifer Jellico has the story. $9.50 to $10 an hour. That's shameful to us. Library workers say they're frustrated and fed up. Their employer won't give them a fair deal. The city's 250 library employees have been without a contract for more than two years, and talks broke off again in August. That's why the union felt it needed to take its message to the street outside the downtown library, saying workers aren't getting paid what they're worth. They have to end up having two or three different different jobs and unfortunately um, utilizing the food bank and utilizing other services and, and that's really that's really shameful for a civic employee. The union says some library managers have received up to a 53 percent wage hike in the last few years. The library board says it does value its employees, adding Saskatoon libraries are busier than ever and it feels the latest deal it offered reflects that. We have a, what we think is a very generous offer on the table, uh, better than what other city unions have received this last round. But the workers felt it wasn't enough and voted overwhelmingly in favour to strike. The union has no plans to do that yet. Both sides say they want to get back to bargaining and may meet at the table again next month. Jennifer Jellico, CTV News, Saskatoon. The father of a convicted cop killer was back in court in Prince Albert today. Art Dagenet faces eight additional firearms charges related to his arrest at the Saskatchewan Penitentiary while trying to visit his son. Dagenet had been temporarily barred from visiting the facility. He was arrested after showing up twice in one morning. He's due back in court on October 17th. His son Curtis is serving a life sentence for the shooting deaths of two RCMP officers near Spiritwood. Well, provincial officials and the RCMP are wrapping up efforts for improved safety on Saskatchewan highways. RCMP are set to begin traffic enforcement blitzes in the busiest construction zones in the province. The focus comes in the wake of the death of a, flags per, a flag person back in August. Signs tell drivers to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour in orange zones, but many construction crews have said that isn't always happening. When it comes to the initiative, the RCMP will play two roles. Basically, our strategy is really twofold. We've got enforcement and then also public education, and both of those we feel are effective in getting the message out to uh, the public that they have a role to play in um, making the uh, construction zone safe. And that's really the end of the day. That's what we want, is the public to realize that, that they have the most important role to play. The Circle Drive South project is the largest single project in the city of Saskatoon's history and it's behind schedule. The $300 million project was supposed to be complete September 30th, but that's been pushed back a month. As Colin Thomas reports, with just six more weeks to go, the city says it's waiting to hear from the contractor what exactly will be open on that date. They've been working on it for more than a year. A new six-lane bridge, five overpasses, 10 kilometers of highway and other infrastructure. While the city is optimistic Circle Drive can be connected by October 30th, it's really up to the contractor, Graham Flatiron, to make that final call. The contractor indicated to us in the summertime that there would be some delays, so they're aiming for the end of October to have traffic flowing on the project. We should know a bit more in a few more weeks. The contractor has not been speaking to the media, but with six weeks to go, here's what some of the project looks like today. The six-lane bridge, the cornerstone of the project, still a lot of work visible on the bridge. This is the Valley Road Exchange on the west side of the new bridge. Here's the interchanges at Idlewild and Lorne Avenues. We've already opened up quite a lot, like 11th Street opened up last year. We've opened up Spadina this week. Lorne Avenue is now open. So people are driving over the new overpasses. It's whether or not they can go under them and the connecting roads. Once traffic can start moving on Circle Drive South, there is still plenty of work to do on the project. Um, as you can see, the bridge behind us, they're you know doing finishing work, but it's also the connecting roads. While the bridge may be finished, are the roads going to be finished in time? And again, we wait for the contractor. The entire project covers a about seven kilometers.